Um, well, I'm Sam Nelson. I'm a product lead at Udacity, uh, where we teach online. Uh, we teach tech skills online, mostly focusedly on technology and tech adjacent industries. Um, I have a background. Started my career as a data analyst in an economics consulting firm. Uh, then went into product management, grad school, and now I get to do some of both as I'm, I manage our data-related programs, so programs that teach data science topics from beginning to advance, um, help you know, determine what are the programs we should build, what companies should we work with, what are the skills needed in industry, uh, and then work with our curriculum team to build a program that addresses those needs. Um, so yeah, really excited to talk to you today, Kate. Great. It's very nice to have you here on Humans of Data Science. Um, and I think you mentioned earlier before we started the recording that you just graduated. So I do want to congratulate you on that and getting your MBA, right? Or master's, which one was it? Yeah, it's an MBA and a master's in education, a joint program. At oh, it's a joint program. Even better. Well, congratulations on that. Right. Thank you. It was quite the, um, it was quite the journey, actually, just to provide more color there. I, I, joined Udacity as a summer intern during my program, you know, because I wanted to be in this kind of alternative higher ed space, lifelong learning space, and Udacity is one of the best companies there. Um, at the end of the summer, they convinced me to just stay on, and so I took a year off of school, and then in the last year, I was working at Udacity, so I've been working at Udacity for two years, and in the last year, I was taking classes as well, and four months ago, we had our third child, and so the last few months have been crazy so graduation was particularly exciting because of you know, those life events oh my god yeah that sounds that sounds busy <laughs> and exciting how old yeah. are the other kids uh so five and three well yep. so yeah. they're excited to have their dad back I'll let them. <laughs> very cool so you've been with Udacity for you said two years Mm -hmm. Have you seen a large growth in applicants or the interest in data science or data related programs over the past two years? Absolutely. Yeah. So Udacity itself has grown a lot over the past couple of years. You know, when I joined, we we're at about 250 employees and I think we're somewhere between 500 and 600 or so now. Um, and, uh, you know, student growth has outpaced uh, employee growth. Um, but particularly in our data programs, there have been some of our, um, you know, our largest programs are in, in data analysis and machine learning because uh, there's huge demand there, both from on the student side and also on the employer side. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've invested a lot into improving our existing programs and building new uh, machine learning and, and AI-related uh, programs. Great. So is there anything new that people can expect to see from Udacity over the next month or so? Yeah, uh, actually, we, we're just launching our data scientist program. So we've had uh, the programs that uh, we have sort of two schools. We have our School of Artificial Intelligence and our School of Data Science. Mm -hmm. um, and the artificial intelligence focuses a lot on machine learning, uh, natural language processing, computer vision, those topics. And on the data science side, we have um, a data foundations program, which is really for beginners, you know, learning Excel, SQL, and Tableau. I, I think it's the data class that everyone in the world should take because if you want to work with data, you should have those skills. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have a business analyst program, which is more focused on, on using advanced analytics, but without code. So we use Alteryx and Tableau to, you know, build machine learning and predictive models. Um, but you don't have to, you know, learn Python or R to do it. Um, and then we have our data analyst program, which is one of our oldest programs done really well, prepares you to become a data analyst, learn Python, SQL, go into all of that. And then we've just built a program that kind of comes after data analyst. So it's, it's a program designed for data analysts and experienced programmers to make the transition mm -hmm. from data analyst to a data scientist. So you start out by diving into machine, machine learning, um, unsupervised, uh, intro to deep learning and supervised learning. Um, and then uh, the second half of the program is all about applying that into building end-to-end -end applications. So, uh, you know, actually running ETL pipeline, cleaning your data, building the model, and even deploying it. Uh, mm -hmm. And worked with different companies to, um, to help design those projects. So you're not just working on the clean data sets. That's yeah. one of the things. So we work a lot with industry, and the feedback we get from industry is, a lot of people, it's, it's easy to find people who can build machine learning models, but hard to find people who can do it end to end because um, they've just used clean data and whatever education program they've gone through. And so we've got companies like 
figure eight and IBM to provide us data, real data, um, anonymize it, of course, that students use to build um, to build uh, projects. So for example, uh, IBM gave us user behavior data from their online community, but like their, uh, uh, their data science community website. So you build a recommendation engine using, using that data. Um, so anyway, we're really excited about that program. I just don't want this to be all about that program, of course, no, but I'm uh, curious. That, that's so, very every, relevant to what we're doing right now. So Yes, yes. I, I think I'm curious, and I think a lot of the, the listeners will also be curious about this program, and I can include links to the um, YouTube video description that people can go and check out the program on their own. But um, just last question on this. So everybody, in order to complete this project or class, you have to create your own app you mentioned? So do people get uh, freedom in selecting what type of app they're developing, or is that kind of predetermined when you're starting the class? Uh, good question. Yeah, so we, we try to design our program so we handhold you at the beginning and slowly release this constraints as you get further along. So yeah, you, uh, a couple of the apps you build, um, you have some more choice in it. So uh, the, there's two main areas where you have your own choice. So one is you have to write a data science blog post as one of your projects. So you have okay. to do the whole analysis, Jupyter Notebook, GitHub um, repository, and then ultimately a blog post that's to a non-technical audience. Because again, some of the feedback we received from, received from industry is we have all these geniuses who are data scientists, um, but not everybody can translate their solutions into um, something that businesses or other people can use because they just don't understand it. Um, and so students can choose what they want to do um, for that project and what they want to write about. And then the capstone project to do at the very end, it's totally open-ended. It's okay. choose your own data science project, whatever's interesting to you, um, and show it's a, it's a way to demonstrate end-to-end -end being able to build an entire solution. And that could be anything from sort of an academic type paper to an app to, a you know, a, again, a blog post, something like that, but something to, to really show off the skills. And, and that capstone project is super important to be able to break into the industry people so yeah yeah i think i think that's great because people can work with something they're really passionate about and then right. the blog post is a great idea because i've also heard similar feedback where geniuses right <laughs> who can code and everything but if they have trouble maybe communicating or simplifying down the terms for a regular audience so that's really cool okay yeah. well, enough about udacity back to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> I noticed on your LinkedIn profile that you did some work in Kenya for the Bridge International Academies. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, okay. So uh, this is actually before, right before I went to, to grad school. Um, I you know, got into grad school. I knew where I was going. I had some time, and so I you know, left my other job early to go, uh, I had you know, a couple, knew a couple people that worked with this company in Kenya, and so uh, me and my my family, including my five-month-old daughter, uh, moved to Nairobi for a few months. And uh, so Bridge International Academies had owned, at the time, owned about 400 uh, low-cost private schools throughout um, Kenya and Uganda. Now they're in several other countries. And essentially they could educate uh, children at $10 a day, uh, or sorry, $10 a month. Um, and at these sort of... Uh, very basic schools, but they had all the all the teachers had tablets, and they would sync the data every day. So they had data coming in from every school every day into um, the headquarters in Nairobi. And so I worked with their operations team to, uh, to improve the way they use data. Um, and so uh, a couple of my projects there. Uh, the biggest project was about building out some um, dashboards to help them have a better pulse on the business. Mm -hmm. um, and they they use uh, Microsoft SQL Server and Excel. And okay. despite me trying to convince them to use things like Tableau and other tools, you know, Excel was it. So I built out a dashboard, um, some dashboarding in Excel where they could look at each individual um, academy to see a whole bunch of metrics about how they were doing. Doing, um, starting with uh, financial metrics to give them a pulse on okay which ones are doing well, which ones are we struggling, which ones have costs that are out of line. Um, and then we were working on getting all that, the same data, the, the same type of dashboard in from the academic data to see which mm -hmm. ones. Uh, and then also one where you can compare across all the academies. So when you have 400 academies that are, you know, it's, it's, it's like having uh, 
you know, 400 competitors that you can just like benchmark to, to each other and see which ones are out of, out of line. And so um, there's a lot of ex exploratory data analysis where seeing you know, which ones, if you, if you, uh, you know, visualize the data and scatter plots with different um, axes, which ones are out of line, where you can identify ways um, to improve. So that was one big project. The other one was doing a lot of training on Excel, mm -hmm. uh, improve their overall use, um, and uh, and then also hiring in a few data analysts that would be there permanently. Uh, so the, that was a, sort of my three month task. Oh, so it was three months. Okay, that was going to be my next question. How long you spent there? So three months. Yep. That that's really cool. Um, so. Sam, you graduated grad school, you had your third baby. So the next question I have for you is, what is your next big goal? It could be personal or professional. Um, that's a great question. So I'm really passionate about um, data education. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, and the reason is, uh, so I started my career, uh, you know, variety of things, but this is one of the things that really pushed me in this direction, is I started my career as a data analyst at, at Cornerstone Research, um, it's an economics consulting firm. And one of the first things I had to do there was learn SAS. And it was super painful for me, you know. Like I had done some Stata in uh, in college, but you know, didn't they don't really teach you to code. And I was so frustrated because I was like, I just spent four years in university, and I come out and in studying economics, and I'm getting the job that you're supposed to get if you study economics, you know. Yeah. And uh, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it took months and lots of time from mentors and all to help me uh, to learn that and I thought this is messed up like it should be way easier than this and so um, you know I really want to be in this the data education space and, and improve the way people go you know get jobs in in data science um, improve their experience uh, so in terms of what I'm doing next I'm you know I'm planning on being at Udacity for a while uh, um, but yeah would love to continue working with um, with education institutions and companies about improving um, improving the path, uh, not just for people that go to great schools, mm -hmm. um, uh, for anybody to, to learn how to use data, because I think it's a huge, if people can learn data, it's a huge uh, boost to their you know, uh, money-making ability and lifestyle, and it's a great job, and so I you know, want that those paths to be really accessible for people. Yeah, I agree. I, I think even just the personal confidence people get once they learn a new skill or can interpret interpret data, I think that's going to be the next, I mean, it is the next hot skill, but it's getting even more um, in demand, I guess. Right. So Sam, the last question I have for you today is, what do you like to do outside of work? So outside of data. Outside of data, there isn't anything, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I love the outdoors. I, uh, I don't get out enough. Um, love camping, hiking. Um, now that my kids are getting old enough to do it with me, it's, it's really exciting. Um, love playing sports. So I play uh, I play basketball about two to three times a week in the mornings. Okay. Uh, yeah, I play at the church near where I live with the guys that have been playing there for like 30 or 40 years. And one of them, no joke, is 82 years old. Oh wow! And he's still really good. Like, <laughs> better than you, or are you? He's a better shooter than me. No, no question. He may he never misses. Um, the only reason I'm better than him at this point is because I can move fast. <laughs> so you know that's one of my goals is to be playing basketball at eight years old. Um, uh, you know, also enjoy playing other sports like tennis and um, and uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, spending time with the kids. Um, going on little adventures with them is always fun. Uh, we, me and my wife sometimes take all the, the whole family out on uh, what we call it stroller blading. <laughs> We're on roller blades and the kids are in strollers and we push them along the path. So that's another thing. That's oh my fun. God. Do you have any pictures of that? That would be fun. <laughs> uh, I don't, I, I'm sure we do somewhere, but yeah. I've never heard of stroller blading. I should try that. I used to roll blade a lot before I had like a normal job. I used to roll blade to my bagel store job at four o'clock in the morning. So Oh, excellent. Haven't tried stroller blading yet, though. <laughs> Got to do it. <laughs> Seems dangerous for me. Great exercise with kids. <laughs> All right, Sam. Well, thank you so much. It's been really fun getting to know you. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much, Kate.